Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what is the church? What does it do? What are its characteristics? Who is it made up of? It's often a good exercise to think about these things because it helps us to see where our place is in the body of Christ. So take a minute or so and think about this question. What is the church and what is its purpose? Here's a kind of working definition that I came up with. The church is the collection of Christ followers who gather to worship, rely on scripture, build each other up, and serve the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of their communities. But where did the church start? That is what we're gonna talk about today. After Jesus resurrected, showed himself to the disciples and almost 500 others, he called all the disciples to the top of a mountain where he commanded them to go and make disciples. He told them that his helper was coming and they should go to Jerusalem and wait. They hid in Jerusalem for about 50 days when people from all over came to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. It was the Jewish festival that celebrated the beginning of the harvest and the receiving of the law by Moses. Now, if you remember, the last time there was a big festival in Jerusalem, it ended with the death of Jesus. But this time, it'll end with the beginning of the church. So take some time and read Acts 2, 1 through 13. So all the disciples are meeting together when all of a sudden a sound like a rushing wind came they saw tongues of fire resting on their heads. This signaled the coming of the Holy Spirit or the helper as Jesus had promised. Then they immediately went out and began speaking in languages that they didn't know how to speak. They had boldness as they spoke and they refused to hide anymore. And they feared that they would assume the same death as Jesus. The people respond in two ways. First, they're amazed that they can speak so many languages. But second, they just assume they're drunk. But what's clear is that 15 different languages were being spoken, and it is only possible because the Holy Spirit empowers the church. A church without the Holy Spirit, it's not a church. Maybe a country club, a religious gathering, maybe even worse, just a mob. But a church that understands that the Holy Spirit empowers them sees with clarity the purpose, the calling, and the service of the church. So why is it important for every believer to be part of a local church. That's right, because the local church helps us to follow Jesus better, to be transformed by Jesus, and to help others do the same. But that's not the end of the story because it's the commission of all the disciples to proclaim the gospel. And that's exactly what Peter does. So read Acts 2, 14 through 41, and let's see what happens. So Peter begins to preach this beautiful message, connecting Old Testament scriptures about the coming Messiah to Jesus. He tells them that Jesus was the promised one who came as savior of the world. And we know it was true because he was killed and raised to life three days later. This is a signifying mark that the church proclaims the gospel. The people believe in Peter's words and ask, well, what should we do? Peter's response is to repent and be baptized. And it says that there were 3,000 added that day. Now these were the same disciples who were hiding for their lives, who were complaining about being first and last, and Peter, who even denied knowing Jesus. So what other ways were these disciples different after the coming of the Holy Spirit than they were before? the church went from about 100 to over 3,000 that day, and they began to meet in homes, remembering Jesus' words and to help each other. So let's read Acts 2, 42 through 47, and see how the newly formed church responded. One of the most important words in this section is the word devoted. 
The church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Is that a characteristic of your church attendance? Would you consider yourself devoted? That's important because the early church felt empowered by the Holy Spirit to both preach and live out the gospel with each other and with the community that they were in. And it says that it worked, that day by day, people were being saved. And it's our responsibility not just to preach the gospel, but that the church lives out the gospel. Being devoted to the church and living out its purposes will make us a positive witness to those in the world around us. And so what are some practical ways that you can demonstrate that you love God? We may need to take some time and think about it, that if I'm devoted to the church, it's hard for me to believe that someone could be devoted to Christ, but not devoted to the church. Now we know that there's always reasons the church is flawed, missing the mark, or not really exactly what Christ intended. But the church is God's plan for taking his gospel to the world. And if we don't at least try to do that, are we really being faithful to God? Maybe this week, you should take some time and think about what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to participate the church in its mission, and be part of its gathering.